Okay, so now we have this uh, DV9000 that was sent to us. We had taken out of the case before it was a DOA system. So what we have here is uh, power light on. And we're going to push the power button and see what happens. Um, now what, what has transpired since we did everything is this capacitor right here uh, seemed to have uh, art it sparked a little bit so what we're gonna do and you can actually see it if you take a look at it a little bit of damage on it what we're gonna do is uh, cut the system on and see what happens so we get the lights we get everything out of it now it appears to be running of course, it's given a memory code error, uh, but we don't see anything coming out of that capacitor. Uh, we see nothing coming out of the whole entire area, actually. Now, we know that that's in the power circuit, and it's actually uh, performing a function. And um, so... Uh, our best guess is to try to figure out exactly what that capacitor controls and what it does because uh, we have chipsets getting hot and processors getting hot so we know that we have everything booting but as far as that capacitor is concerned uh, since it's arced and sparked there's something that's going on with the power circuit and everything there that we need to uh, figure out. So what we're going to do is uh, most likely change that capacitor out and then go from there and see what happens. Okay, so we still have our uh, bad chip on there as far as our capacitor, but we're going to hook this up and see if we get a video out of it uh, just as a testing deal. So we're going to push the power button here, we get the lights, um, and we're going to see about the video here. And we have syncing with the video. So we know that the uh, video works even though that chip shorted. And we know that other parts on the board work, i.e. the memory, the uh, CPU, uh, the two chipsets, um, this subcontroller here. But what we're going to do is still pull that chip off just to make for certain that um, something's not damaged there. So that's what we're going to do uh, here right now. Uh, so we're going to take this over to our other workbench area and uh, we're going to uh, set it up for the parallel remover and do a little bit of testing and see if we can't get this uh, chip off. Okay, so we have our uh, chip changed out, which you can see it right there, uh, where we've replaced it and re-soldered a new one on. So what we're going to do is turn this on and um, let it run for a few hours, like we always do. So what we're going to do is uh, let it boot up which I actually forgot to put the uh, keyboard plugged in. So we're going to have to restart this computer already to go into the BIOS. So let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to put this... Alright, so we're going to turn this off. And then turn it right back on. And then we're going to run it and see what happens. So we gotta boot this up. Control Alt Delete. Oh, Control Alt Delete. Then press F10 to see if we can't get it into uh, BIOS. So we have it into the BIOS. And we see that it's, uh, let's say, nearly 1350. 
So we're going to let this run and do what it needs to do to uh, run for a few hours. We'll probably run it for an hour and see what happens and then uh, go from there. As you can tell, I didn't plug the uh, fan in, so we'll plug that fan in right there and we'll let it run and do what it needs to do to uh, test and see if that chip's going to fail again or not. So uh, we'll let it do its thing and see where it goes. Okay, so we've had this running for about an hour. We can see that we're at 1440 now. So we're going to say that the repair we did has uh, held up and that the uh, chipsets and everything seem to be fine. So we're going to call this one complete and say that it's done. Put it back together and uh, get it boxed up and ready to go. Uh, that's that's going to be it on this one.